Okay, hi guys, my name is Rob Anderson and I'm the product training and demo exec for Pioneer DJ UK. Today I'm back up at the DJ Kit showrooms in Newbury and I'm going to be talking you through the latest addition to our DJ range, which as you can see down here is the Professional Mixer DJM750. So, brand new four channel mixer we've introduced into the series and it's going to be replacing the existing DJM 700's place as the lower priced four channel mixer. So perfect for someone who wants a high quality mixer for home use, mobile use or maybe for a budget install for bars and smaller venues. So let me take you through what we've incorporated onto this unit and what makes it different from the existing 700 and also the differences between the current models in the range. So first of all you can see it pretty much looks the same. This whole section is very similar to all the four channel mixers in the series bar the DJM 2000 which has a slightly different ergonomic layout simply to tailor um, and facilitate the more specialist features on the touchscreen technology but yeah looking at the channel strips we've now upgraded all the fader caps to the p-lock fader system so these fader caps will not come off in the heat of the mix they can be taken off for repairs etc but they will not come off in the heat of the mix <clears throat> moving up the channel strip we've got three band isolator EQ so your EQ can be set to either standard EQ or isolator meaning there's zero bleed from any of the other bands in isolator mode a lot more precise uh, EQing when you're mixing and moving further up the channel strip you can see up on the input paths we've got the option for USB to the far right this gives us access to the USB integral sound card so a very high quality Pioneer exclusive construction integral sound card now this is present in the DJM 750, the DJM 850 and now the DJM 900 as well and it just ensures that we're achieving the highest level of sound quality that Pioneer have ever achieved so comparison from the DJM 750 to the 700 in terms of sound quality is almost incomparable uh, the, the level of sound you're getting out of this is definitely vastly improved it's a two-way USB so one connection to your laptop and you can do live recording to recording softwares and you can also run music into the uh, into the mixer from iTunes or any virtual DJ and software that you're using so yeah Massively overhauled sound quality. You can see we've got one mic input. Our MIDI controls here, as every pot on this on the mixer is uh, MIDI assignable through the USB as well. If you want to use this as a MIDI control surface, and of course the headphone monitoring controls at the bottom down here. Part of the major overhaul largely lies with the effects. So over on the far right, you can see we've got the beat effects section where it's been on the mixers, the variations of this mixer for a long time. Except now, slight, slight differences, we've got a sound color effects section incorporated into the beat effects section. So, whereas the DJM 700 had um, filter control over the effects that you were using on here, the DJM 750 has its own sound color effects in here. So incorporated from the 900, the 850, and you know, originally inspired from the 800. But this works in a slightly different way, and I'm gonna run some music, turn the, turn the music up louder in a minute, and show you exactly how these all work. So let me split the effects section into three, first of all. We've got the beat effects, controls and selection and level depth down here. We've got the sound color effects up here. Then we've also got the beat effects display up here with the beat parameter controls and the BPM detection algorithm engine built inside there as well. So yeah, let's run some music and I'll show you some of the new effects we've, we've brought onto it. So I'll start down here, level depth down, choose an effect, echo, <coughs> choose a channel. In this case, channel three. Turn the effect on, choose a beat parameter at the top, say a quarter beat, then increase the level depth and you hear the effect. This is the way the beat effects have been working for years. Again, post fader. You can change the beat parameters up at the top here to change the echo time. 
or you can use the timing pot to scan through the milliseconds as you see it here. So if you want to use uh, more subtle increments, you can tighten, turn this to the left and tighten that right up. Some of the new effects we brought on though, we've now got Spiral. So on the DJM850 and DJM900, amazing sounding effect. It recreates the tape delay. So you can hear, it sounds similar to the Echo, except you get this degradation to the uh, delay tail. And if you turn the level depth past 12 o'clock, it actually starts to feed back. So you get, you can get feedback on your tail. Now, if I turn the effect back on, one unique thing about the spiral is, if you change the beat parameters, it will slow down. So you, you hear the delay tails actually slowing down from a quarter beat. To a half beat. Very trippy, kind of uh, automated sounding delay tail. And then again, we can turn the feedback up. So some cool tricks to be done with that, especially when you fade it out of track. You can actually completely just twist the track up and catch certain points as well. If you instigate the effect while there's a vocal running or key percussion samples, you can uh, have that repeating in the delay tail and then slow it right down by increasing the beat parameters. <laughs> Reverb as well, incorporated, well it's been present on our mixers for quite a while but it's studio quality reverb now if I introduce the reverb. And I'm actually going to jump to a breakdown of the track on my hot cues. So subtle reverb there and I can change the beat parameters. To to increase the, the um, reverb time, but I'm not. I'm going to use the time control here to time pop to subtly and slowly just increase the room size. Getting bigger and bigger. Now the beauty of this is, when I turn the level depth to the right, it starts to high pass. So we can increase the room size, building towards the drop, and when the drop's gonna kick in, or when the track actually kicks in, we can high pass the reverb, creating intensity so we can get something like this. And hopefully everyone puts their hands in the air and screams. If you put this to the left again, drag the reverb out and you hear it swoop, like almost swooshing up. We've got a trans, filter, flanger, phaser and robot present on our other mixers as well but a much better or an upgraded BPM algorithm from the DJM 700 in here. So the same as the, the 850 and the 900 now so if we turn this on. Transform is chopping the track up but you can hear it's a lot more accurate than it ever was on previous units. If we turn the level depth to the right again, we, we change the decay. Robot, this is a nice effect which I use in conjunction with the color effects which I'm going to show you in a minute. But we've also incorporated now a vinyl break. So, a vinyl break in sound effect. Not too overly impressive on its own, but when you're mixing out of a track, you can throw this on and it's very, it's almost subtle when you bring in the percussion of the other tune that on the other deck and you vinyl break a track that you're mixing out of, it just creates a bit of a different atmosphere and changes how the track is, uh, how, the, how the listeners are perceiving that, that tune, almost making you wonder what, what's, what the DJ's doing, what's actually going on with that effect. But I'd use that a lot in conjunction with the sound color effects as well, so we'll use them in a minute. Of course, the famous slip roll. So, same as the roll effect. The standard roll, if I sample one beat of music, it repeats one beat, and if I change the beat parameters up here, 
you hear the same sample, but shortened or lengthened, depending on depending on the B parameters you set. Which allows you to do some cool stuttering effects if we quarter beat, half, and then use the time. But the slip roll, if I sample half a beat, every time I change the beat parameter, it resamples from the current audio source running through. So especially if you've got vocals running, you're not going to miss any of the vocals. And then of course you've got reverse roll, which is the exact same as roll, but going backwards. So using the three of them, you can come up with some... Nice little stuttering sounds. Depending on what music you play, I tend to use this when I'm mixing out of a track and I've got the low end out because it's not as uh, harsh and in your face. And uh, just adds again another element when you're when you're actually fade instead of just fading a tune out, you can come up with some uh, cool little stuttering rolls and just leave the users wondering what the DJ's doing. Keep them interested. If I set the roll to eight beats, this can also be used as a sampler. So if I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can actually stop the CDJ. And the sample's running now, which can be sent across the desk to any channel. We've got it running through channel one now. And left in the mix, you can mix it with two tracks. You can sample from one you're blending out of, send it to a spare channel, and you're doing three-deg mixing. Same as the DJM 700, you can then use the sound color effects in conjunction with the sample that we've just taken. So I guess that takes us on to this section up here now. So standard effects we have, which you'll be familiar with. Filter, used in the same way as on the other, other mixers in the series, the DJM 850, the DJM 900, as well as the predecessor, DJM 800 and it's a similar way to the 700. But we can use this large chrome pot to turn to the right and create high pass. Or we can go to the left, create low pass. We've got the famous crush effect. So low bit destruction and filtering. We've got white noise, which won't work on a sample. I'll show you that in a moment. And then we've got jet. Now the jet's really nice, it's been overhauled. Almost sounds like you're time stretching. I'm gonna jump back to the original source. So let's jump back to this track, running through channel three. I'm gonna set the effects back to channel three and show you the, the really, uh, new element that we've incorporated onto the sound color effects which is this boost button so every mixer that comes into the series has its own um, kind of exclusive feature so when you reasons for going for a 750 vary to going for a, an 850 or a 900 so the 900 is our top of the range premium spec mixer it's got digital inputs it's also got a LAN connection on the back, so every effect you use will be locked to the BPM of the track that you're sending in there. And it also has a number of more effects. It has more effects than uh, the DJM 750 and the DJM 850. So you've got an extra two color effects, more control over the beat effects section with the, um, the built-in uh, X-pad, which we can actually see over here. If I just scan across while I'm talking about it, we've got a 900 present here. So you can see, that's the top spec premium model. The 850 is a scaled down version of that, with again, its own exclusive effects, and it's also got uh, independent filters, independent sound color effects across every channel, which are kind of essential for club mixing. You know, they're the things that DJs require for professional operation. The 750, 
the sound color effects are limited to one channel at a time. Now they're not a master, they're not just limited to master, you can actually select which channel you want to filter using the beat effects uh, channel select. So slightly better than the uh, DJM 700, the predecessor, as we can actually use them on independent channels, which is cool, but only one sound color effect at a time. But let's jump onto the boost effect section and show you how these work. So when I activate this, it instigates uh, a dual layer of effects. So instead of just having a low pass filter, which I've got now, if I turn the boost on, we get another layer of delays. So go to high pass. It makes it sound really atmospheric. And it's also, it's like this becomes a macro. So two, one pot doing two things. And of course these are post fader. So very cool. That boost effect will work the same way on the crush. So that post fader, same uh, delay tail pattern. Now with the noise, so the noise I'll actually use on a separate channel because then I can control the volume as well. If I instigate noise now, I've got it coming through channel four. If I turn on the boost effects, we get, again, it just really makes it a much more atmospheric. If I turn this sharply, you'll hear it. So a delay. Nice delay tails. Cool thing about the boost is if we turn it off while it's activated, while it's actually creating that delay tail, we get like a spring. It, it, the delay tail almost springs up. So if I turn this far to the left, this sound color part, and turn the boost off. So very unique sounding exit to the effects. And I've killed the low end on here, just to accentuate like a breakdown. And I'm gonna come, turn the low end back on when I turn the boost off, so. So very cool method of use with that. So the last effect from the sound color effects section to be used with the boost is the jet. So this works in a slightly different way. When you're using the boost with this, it, um, the delay tails react differently to how they react on the other three effects. So if I leave the track running and turn the jet on and literally introduce this, it kind of replicates, uh, it's similar to the dub echo and also similar to the spiral as well in that you can hear the delay tails almost side chaining on themselves. If I do it to the low pass, kill the low end. So there's nothing really out there that sounds anything like this at all on our DJM series range. So that's using it to an extreme circumstance. If I was to use that to just literally pick out certain percussive elements, I can turn this on, but the jet isn't activated. And when I tap it, tap it off again, you can literally pick out the snares or pick out cowbells or vocals or any kind of elements you, you want to um, you want to apply delay to. So if I pick the snare. Then build it up towards the drop. It's a really useful effect and I'll use, um, I'm actually in the main part of the track now on the track's full glass, but you can actually create your own nice little breakdowns using this effect. If I kill the low end, creating tones. And you know, you can use all of these four in conjunction with 
and the beat effects. So if I create, create a breakdown, I'm going to then apply the reverb. conjunction with each other if I use let's say the robot with this effect as well or I like the robot the classic pitching effect if I turn the robot on you've got pitch control of the track which you know in deep house it is quite a severe and extreme sounding effect but when you use it with uh, some of these effects up here like I can punch on the filter and just create these little tonal delays because we've got the boost effect turned on. If I punch that on with the robot, so I'm punching the robot on the beat effect and the filter and the boost effects on on here, and you're creating these atmospheric tonal delays. which is really cool. Use it with the spiral. You know, the, the, the combinations are endless, or the filter. Jump to reverb, or spiral. Get the spiral feeding back. And then lastly, you know, one use of the spiral as well is to kind of filter out of the track. So there you go, all the features and functions we've made available on the DJM700 in a brief walkthrough, a quick walkthrough. Some of these um, ways I've been using these effects is the, the ways I've figured out to use this so far and kind of the, the exclusive sounds you can create only from this mixer. Of course there's send return uh, connections on the back of this as well so you can even add an RMX into the chain if you want. but. As a lower priced four channel mixer, this offers quite a lot. Amazing sound quality, along with a whole host of really cool new effects. This is gonna be in the DJ Kit showrooms, probably in the end of the month. So get yourselves down, get hands on with this, see exactly how you can tailor these effects into your style of music.